you are the DB admin at the same time. Right? This happens in a lot of companies. If this is the case, you can simply de deploy from within Visual Studio. Say deploy and it will upload everything to the server without you doing anything. And this is really a nice feature for both. So you can work from both sides. This feature is available from both. Just a quick comparison between both projects. Uh, database projects are usually for big, big databases. You know, data tier application is focused toward small to medium. I mean, if your database is like up to 1,000 table or 1,000 objects, something, something small like that, it's considered small. And uh, then this is a very nice candidate that you can work with. Uh, database projects works on different versions, while data tier only works on R2. Microsoft is saying that they will support uh, 2008. So for, for the time being, no. You can only work on R2 with this. Uh, anyway, you cannot deploy, you cannot have any policy in database project while well, you can do this in data tier. Upgrading is done here through SQL. Now, by upgrading, you have two things, data and schema, right? Like new tables and stuff. Well, database project by default just handles the schema. And the data stays in the same database. So this is the database deploy on the same database, and that's it. It's very different in data tier applications. I'll show you how this is done in a demo. What actually d uh, happens is that even data is migrated. Uh, this is one issue. Microsoft is not talking about this too much, but uh, th this is true. Uh, not all objects are supported in data tier. You know, file stream, encrypted uh, procedures, or uh, extended store procedures, these are not supported currently by data tier application, but Microsoft is promising that they will, remember this is version one of data tier application, it, it's, you know, it's new, relative new. Uh, while for the debugging, it's supported in both. Anyway, enough talking, let me just show you quickly a complete example on how this works. Remember what I told you, that this can work from both sides. You can start from Visual Studio and actually create your database from Visual Studio and then upload it to the database. But I'm thinking that usually the case is no. You start from a database, right? And then you import it into your application. So I'll start here by SQL Server R2. And I'll just very quickly cr create a new database in which I'll call, you know, DAC demo, whatever, double O. And then click. Uh, So I have a new database called Deck Demo, and I'll simply create a new table, a very easy table, you know, a very simple table. Employee ID, let's have an integer, and then just add the name. Very famous example. Okay. So I'll just save this table. And click OK. Now, what do I need to do for this database? Well, first of all, if you need to get the features, you know, the best out of data tier application, you should first start by, you know, in management here, you see that I have something called data tier applications. So the first thing you should do, really, is you should go to task and register this database as a data tier application. It's a very simple wizard. The default version is one. Of course, it will upgrade it later on, uh, based on your changes. Anyway, this is the, right now it's registering the database. And once it's finished, I'll start immediately with the next step. Now, I need this to run in Visual Studio. So what I'll do is simply, again, from tasks, I'll extract a data tier application from this database. Again, a very simple wizard. And by the way, it asked me yeah, for the location of the file. So I'll just put it somewhere on the desktop. Yeah, the desktop, it's already there. Click Next. And again, it just exported that file over here. Now, I want to show you something.
Where's the file? Somewhere. Did I miss it? You see it? Probably I, I put it somewhere else. Let me extract it again. Probably put it somewhere else. Uh, Yeah, I didn't put it on the desktop. So let's click on desktop, save again. Next, and finished. So let's go back. Now, this file, I mean, if I just try and show you very quickly what this file contains, um, a SQL script and some XML files. Well, I think you're, you're, you're already getting the picture of what's in, the, in there. It's the schema and stuff with, within the database. It's all stored there. I just wanted to show you how it looks like before working with it in Visual Studio. So I'll start a new project right now. I'll choose database SQL Server. And as you can see here, I have SQL Server data tier applications. So I'll choose this one. I didn't even change the name. Uh, OK. Now, what I'll do is right click and choose what? Imports data tier application. So, right now, the wizard will simply ask you to please show me where the file is, the file that is the dot pack file. If I'm moving too fast, please stop me. Huh? So, I'll just point to the file. Next. It's just importing everything, and now it's here within my application. Now, within my you know, data tier application. Uh, simply to show you, let's go to schemas. And by the way, this looks a lot like database project. It's not very different, but you know, there are some differences which I will show you eventually. So tables, and this is the employees table. So. A table is already here, and this is simple SQL statement. I'll try something like adding a quick view, for example. The employees table, how you can manage the data for employees in the table? I'll discuss this uh, afterwards, if I have some time, because I have many features, okay. but this is a very easy thing. Okay. This, this can be done by generating data or even managing it later. So right now, I'll call this as vimp let's say, a view which will display all employees. Now, I need to point you out to something. Do you see this? It's, it's telling me that this is not connected. So I'm not connected to the real database right now. The amazing thing, in my opinion, is that you, know, you can, uh, you know, once I say from dbo dot, as you can see, uh, see it, it shows me, this is, this is called offline IntelliSend. So even the view that I just created right now is on the list already. Anyway, I'll simply just create this view, David. And the same thing, I'll just create a new store procedure. Oops. Yeah, anyway. Which I will call something like you know, USP get all imp. So this will create, again, a, a store procedure for me. So I, I think that one parameter is enough. I'll just call this parameter imp ID. So just send, send the employee ID. And what you will get is you know, select from dbo dot you know, employees. Let's add the where, where uh, the imp ID, or I'm sorry, I should have started with the name of the column, where employee ID equals this. So I'll just, you know. Now I have these two. I think I'm finished. And before I start deploying this on the, you know, database side, let me show you this also. The, in the properties uh, of the data tier application, 